Hi guys, this is Unit 11, Lesson 1, Solving Systems of Equations by Graphing. We have quite a few objectives today. First we have, I can solve a system of equations with no solution, one solution, and infinitely many solutions. Next, I can check the solution using the original system of equations, algebraically and graphically. Three, I can solve a system of equations graphically and explain the solution at the intersection. Four, I can match the type of solution to its corresponding graph. For today, the first thing that you're going to have to make sure you can recall is slope-intercept form. Remember that slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. And if you remember, we said m is always our slope, and b is always going to be our y-intercept. Why this is important is we're going to be graphing today, and we all know it's a lot easier to graph things when they're in slope-intercept form. We do have two key terms before we can get started. The first is system of equations. This consists of two or more linear equations in the same variables. So that means if one equation is going to have x and y, so is the other equation. Next, we have the solution of a system of equations. And this is always an ordered pair that satisfies each equation in the system. So it's an ordered pair. You guys know what that looks like, x comma y. And it's going to be true for both equations. One way to find the solution to a system of equations is by graphing. Now, when we go ahead and we graph the equations, your system can have three different types of solutions. The first one is your graph can have one solution. If your system of equations is going to have one solution, you'll notice the graph will show them intersecting, and they'll intersect at one point. So if you look at this first graph, they intersect at this point right here. That would be our only solution that would make both equations true. Next, what you'll notice is we have the possibility of having no solution. If we have no solution, anytime that's our answer, our graph will always be two parallel lines. And if you notice, that makes sense because if we know if they intersect at one point, that's the solution, well, we know parallel lines never intersect. So how can they have a solution? They can't. Our last option is to have infinitely many solutions. Now, you guys may be looking at this graph and saying, well, what the heck, there's only one line there. That's exactly what's going to give us infinitely many solutions. It's going to be the same line. So really, this is two lines graphs, but they ended up being the exact same line. And when that happens, we have infinitely many solutions, which means every single ordered pair on this line is going to be a solution to our system of equations. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. First of all, we want to just look at the graphs and solve the linear system. Well, what you should look at for part A is we have two lines here. For this system, they are intersecting, and they're intersecting at this point. So you should be thinking to yourself right away, you know you're going to have one solution. And that solution is going to be where they intersect. So for your answer, what would be the solution to these systems, these two lines? That would be the point 2, 2. Because if we look, our x value is 2, and so is our y value. Moving on to part b, what you should notice is we have what appears to be one line. But they're telling us in the directions that's a system. So if it just looks like one line, you should already be thinking, okay, we know that's infinitely many solutions because there really are two equations graphed there, but they ended up being the same exact line. So that's your clue. So I would write that off to the side there. If you have the same line, what looks like the same line, that's when it's infinitely many solutions. And again, this would be a solution, this would be a solution, this would be a solution. Any point on that line would be a solution to our system. Okay, you guys can go ahead and move on to the next page. You can skip those next two. Those you'll try in class. Moving on to example two. Now what's going to happen is you're going to be given an ordered pair. And you have to say yes or no, is it going to be a solution to the system? Now, in order to be a solution, I want you guys to make a note of this. It has to be true in both equations. It has to be true in both equations. So let's go ahead and take a look at part A. We're given the ordered pair 1, negative 3. 
We know my x value is 1 and my y value is negative 3. You're going to want to make sure you label those so you don't get confused. Now what we have to do is plug it into each equation. So here's my first equation. I'm going to label that equation number 1 and my second equation, equation number 2. So for equation number 1, I'm just going to plug in my x and my y value. So x is 1 minus, and now be careful here, y is a negative 3. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in parentheses. And we have to see, and I'm going to put a little question mark over here, because we have to see if it equals 4. We don't know that it equals 4 yet. So now we just go ahead and simplify. Well, 1 minus a negative 3, that would give me 1 plus a positive 3, which is 4. So does 4 equal 4? Yeah, that's a true statement. If it's a true statement, we know that it works for that equation. But remember what I said, it has to work in both equations in order to be a solution to the system. So now we have to go ahead and try it in equation number 2. Again, we're using our same x and y value, and we're plugging it into our second equation. So we have 4 times, and I'm going to put it in parentheses, x is 1, plus y, which is negative 3. And again, I'm going to put that little question mark over my equal sign, because we have to say, well, does that really equal 1? Well, we go through and simplify. 4 times 1 is 4, plus a negative 3. We know that's the same as saying 4 minus 3. And again, does that equal 1? Well, when we simplify, 4 minus 3 gives me 1, and we know 1 is equal to 1. So again, this is also a true statement. Since both are true, we can answer the question. Is the ordered pair a solution to both equations? Is it a solution to the system? So we can say yes, our ordered pair, 1, negative 3, is a solution. And again, because it worked in both equations. So let's go ahead and try another. Now we're given the ordered pair, negative 8, 10. So I'm going to go ahead and label which one's my x, which one's my y. I'm also going to go ahead and number my equations there so I can just keep them straight. And for my first equation, again, be careful of that negative on the outside there. We have negative, but then x is a negative 8. So I'm going to put that in parentheses. And again, is that going to equal y is 10 minus 2? We just bring down the rest there. Well, negative, remember this is like saying kind of a negative 1 times a negative 8. We know that that's just going to be a positive 8. And we know 10 minus 2 is positive 8. So we work there. So we're true for this statement for our first equation. But you guys know, like I said, we have to check equation number 2 as well. We have 2 times, and again in parentheses, my x value is negative 8, minus my y value, which is 10. And we have to say, okay, is that going to equal 6? So now we just go through and simplify. 2 times negative 8 gives me a negative 16, minus 10. And again, we have to keep simplifying. Does that equal 6? Negative 16 minus 10 gives me a negative 26, which you guys should already be thinking, that does not equal 6. So this is actually a false statement. Since we have one true and one false, it still is going to have to be no for our final answer. It has to work in both. So we would say no, the point negative 8, 10 is not a solution. So the main idea there, it has to work in both equations. Make sure you have that written down. Go ahead and skip the next two. You guys are going to try those in class. And now we're on to actually graphing. Now we are going to be responsible for going through and actually solving the system by graphing. And this is where slope-intercept form is going to come in handy. Remember, slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. So if we look at part A, we're in luck. We already have y by ourselves, so this is going to be a nice one for us. We won't have a lot of algebra to do. So if we look, I'm again, I'm just going to go ahead and number my equations. I think that makes it a little bit easier. So looking at equation 1, we have to go through and graph this. So you guys know we need two things. We need the m and we need the b. So my m value for my first equation, equation number 1, is 2 or 2 over 1. And my b value is positive 2. And you guys know we write that as an ordered pair. That's my y-intercept. So remember, your b value is where you begin. So we start at 0, 2. And then we go ahead and use our slope. We need to go up 2 to the right one, up 2 to the right one. Or remember, we can also go down 2, and we can go to the left one. 
then you guys want to make sure you go ahead there, draw in that line. Let me just grab my line. And now we can move on to our next one. Looking at our next equation, we have y equals 2x plus 6. Well, again, we have to pick out our slope, which is 2 or 2 over 1. My b value, my y-intercept here, is 0, positive 6. So we know we begin on the y-axis at 0, 6. So again, we'll go ahead and go up there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And now my slope is positive 2 over 1. So I go up 2 to the right one. Or remember, we can go down 2 to the left one. And then I want to go ahead, draw in my line there. So I'll go ahead and do that. And now we have graphed both equations. But remember, now this is where it gets a little tricky because sometimes students want to just graph these and then be done with it. But we still actually have to solve it. Well, if you recall from earlier, what we have is we have a graph of two lines. So since we have the graph of two lines, we know they either have one solution, no solution, or infinitely many. Well, what you should be thinking to yourself is these two lines are parallel. If you look at your graph, they don't intersect at all, and they're not the same line. So what does that mean? It means this system has no solution. So there is no ordered pair that will work in both equations at the same time. Let's go ahead and try another one. So, looking over to the right here, we have our first equation. We have y equals 2x minus 1. So, again, we're already in slope-intercept form, so we can go ahead and graph it right away. My slope is 2, or 2 over 1. My b value, or my y-intercept, is 0, negative 1. So, when we graph this line, you guys know we begin on the y-axis at negative 1. And now we need to use our slope. So, we go up 2 to the right one, up 2 to the right one. Or remember, we can also go ahead and go down 2 to the left one. Down 2 to the left one. It doesn't matter. Go ahead and make sure you guys draw in that line. Try and be as straight as you can. You guys should have your ID out. So make sure you're using that straight edge so you got a nice line there. Especially with systems because it's very important of where they actually intersect. And there's our first line. So now we need to move on to equation number 2. Well, if you look, we have a problem. Y is not by itself, so we are not in slope-intercept form. So that's right, we get to solve for Y, everyone's favorite. So we have in our original 2X plus Y equals 3. So to get Y by itself, we have to subtract 2X because 2X is positive. And on the left-hand side, we're just left with Y equal. These are not like terms. We want to be in MX plus B, so we have negative 2X plus 3. And now we can pick out our slope and our y-intercept. My slope here is negative 2 or negative 2 over 1. And my b value is 0, 3. So now we can go to our graph. Just one extra step there. Not too bad. My b value, I begin at 0, 3. And now my slope is negative 2 over 1. So I can go down 2 to the right one. Down 2 to the right one. Or you guys know we could also go ahead and go up 2 and go to the left one. We want to make sure we draw in our line there, connecting those dots. Make sure you guys have your ID out, like I said. And then we want to go ahead and look at our graph. So what you guys should notice and what you should be saying to yourself right now is, okay, I know these are intersecting. They intersect at this point right here. It was on both of our graphs. So we know we're going to have one solution, and your answer is the coordinates of that ordered pair. Well, if you look, my x value is 1 and my y value is 1. So our solution to our equation is 1, 1. Our system of equations, there's our solution. Okay, you guys can go ahead. The rest, you have four U tries you'll take care of in class tomorrow. Make sure you fill in after watching this video what can you do, what do you still not know how to do, and what are you going to do to help yourself.